hey, the Avs are actually playing proper hockey games again, or at least their rookies are, but this one was pretty clearly the first one of the preseason. Don't put too much stock into it. Avs lose to the LA Kings in rookie fashion, four to nothing. Oh my goodness gracious! Wasn't it in time? Score! Justice is served! All right, just like the Avs are remembering how to play hockey, I got to remember how to do these videos. For real, though, don't take anything from this in rookie tournaments and stuff like that. I do believe players can probably raise their stock in some cases, but I never really say that they can lower them because this is preseason. They're still just figuring things out, getting loose. A lot of these guys are going through their first time with an NHL team in preseason and camp. So just don't put too much stock into it in general. With that being said, outside of a couple of the bigger names, it showed quite a bit in this tournament. The Kings brought a ton of their prospects that played in the AHL together last year, and they played as a pretty cohesive unit. The Avs brought a bunch of guys who haven't really played together very much, if at all, and there were no systems. It was just full YOLO hockey, and they kind of got beaten pretty handily. The names you would expect showed well. Byram, when he was active and engaged in this game, looked like one of the better players on the ice. Newhook was a little bit all over the place. He clearly showed some confidence, and if he had chemistry and experience playing with any of these other dudes, very likely would have had a couple of points. But again, no systems, no real connection to any of these players. A lot of these guys didn't even know who each other were less than a week ago. The Avs rookies lasted one minute and seven seconds before giving up the first goal of the preseason. Bear with me on these first two goals because the camera work is not the best, but the Kings are able to collect the puck back in their own zone. You see the Avs commit two forwards high here, so when the puck comes out, not exactly sure what happens here. Andreas Wingerly is clearly at the blue line here, and he manages to stop this puck and keep it in initially, but something happens and Wingerly ends up falling over. So as the Kings eventually do get this puck out of their zone, all three forwards are lost in the offensive zone as the Kings go the other way. Now, on the way coming back, there's clearly some miscommunication here. Bocage is the first forward coming back, and he's going to commit to the puck here. The problem is his defenseman is going to commit to the puck as well. This is a three-on-two situation for the defense. You cannot really take yourself out of this play to try and seal off the boards, because when you do that, a simple pass across creates a two-on-one, and now you're in trouble. Your defenseman is all alone. No one's going to be able to come back and help support. You're just in a terrible place, and the pass is going to come across to Chromiak, and then maybe a touch slow getting across here, but he has to respect the initial play, and it's a tap-in from there. Not a great start all the way around, but, you know, it is what it is. The rest of the first period was extremely slow from the Avalanche side. In fact, for a significant portion of this game, the Avs struggled to generate any offense at all out of the names I already mentioned and a couple other occasional chances. You would see Olausen get involved a little bit with that top line, sometimes Shane Bowers too, but just not a ton of offense, especially down the list. Ranta... Bocage, Foodie, for the first two periods, there just was pretty much nothing going on past the offensive blue line. Again, I said I'm not taking very much stock out of these things. One of my actual, maybe legitimate concerns for this group was they went something like 0 for 7 on the power play. I don't have an exact number, but there were a ton of power plays on both sides. Their PK worked quite well. They did a good job stopping LA from getting power play goals too, but their power play was just not dangerous. And yes, there are no power play systems engaged there, but when you have a man advantage, you should just be able to make better opportunities come. And for a lot of the power play, the Avs kind of just did nothing. 1-0 late in the first period, the Avs end up giving up the second goal of the game with less than two seconds left, and is pretty much all downhill from there. A 4-on-4 situation. This is actually fine defense by Baron to start. He sticks with his man, forces him to curl back, and basically resets the play. The problem is the Avs are stuck deep in their own zone, and they have no one committing up high. Maybe there's supposed to be a switch there from this high forward that just doesn't happen, but you can see everything above the circles is completely uncontested by the Avs, leaving a ton of room for LA to work with. The initial shot gets snapped off immediately, 
I do believe Ananen makes the save, but he gives up a rebound here. Did not have the best rebound control of the night. Even that, though, you should be fine here. The Avs have two bodies right in front. The Kings have none. Unfortunately, as the puck trickles out, you can see it right here. Sampo Ranta just never sees it, has no idea where it is, turns his back to the puck, completely lost, and that gives enough time for the Kings player to roof it over and in it. So you can pretty clearly see the sloppiness with this team, particularly on the defensive side without systems to use. Ananen, I thought, actually played pretty okay, certainly for a game where he ended up giving up four goals in it. His rebound control did mean some work, but he also just got no help from the defense in front of him a lot of the time. The second period, things started to look better. In particular, I thought Justin Barron stood out quite a bit. On a team with no systems, he was one of the very, very few players that was actually positionally responsible, regularly covering back, and being sometimes the only man back to help break up odd man rushes. And that didn't stop him from making smart pinches and getting involved on the offensive side when there were opportunities to do so. There were things to like about these rookies, despite it being a game where they were held scoreless. You just have to dig a little bit deeper sometimes. Ultimately, the Avs give up another goal in the second period. This one is entirely on the goaltender. Forgive me for not knowing the Kings prospects by name, I just don't know their system very well besides the guys at the very top. This one is uh, pretty gross to watch. Avs coming back here, the puck is in deep, right on Annan and Stick. This is a nothing play and shouldn't even be dangerous. You have Baron cutting to this corner and his other option cutting it to the far corner. He can do pretty much whatever he wants with this and he has plenty of time to choose. You can see he gets his head up and checks to go on his forehand side but ultimately decides to hit his backhand. Unfortunately, he does this without head checking first. Doesn't see that the Kings player has cut Baron off and going up the boards is not an option. Baron probably could have communicated with him to let him know that's not an option, but with this much time, Annan then really needs to check before he blind throws a pass to nobody. The turnover immediately results in a goal as Annan can't recover. The third period did see the abs start to push the offense a little bit more. You started seeing a lot more of Bowen Byram, and a lot of the offense from the abs run directly through him. For these rookies. He generated a ton for them. Really, their most of their quality scoring opportunities did come from Byram, or at least through Byram. So, he looks solid. He looks like he's using this as a tune-up. He's going to be in the NHL. You got what you wanted from him. Not a whole lot to this one beyond that. They end up do giving up a fourth goal, which you can check out here. The last goal of the game, you can see the abs are marked up pretty well with their guys here. So everything is fine. This puck gets floated in to the wide side of the net pretty clearly. And then looks to reach out his stick and try and play it and fails to. Might be looking at a situation where you just tell Annan to stop trying to play pucks, to be honest. Goes in behind the net and you see the abs just kind of float. All three forwards staying high in the zone, no one committing back to help the defense. It's just an issue as they lose the race to the puck, the puck comes through the crease, and the beaten abs now two options for the Kings to shoot into a gaping cage. Pretty easy goal to knock in from there. A myriad of issues that very quickly broke down, a lot of which could be solved by honestly just focusing and playing with a bit more effort. So... A very messy game, a lot of problems that could be fixed across the board, a handful of guys that did look solid that, let's face it, you wanted and expected to look solid. I would expect more from them in the other two games of this tournament going forward. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednbr.com for all of our coverage from Avs, rookies, all the way through the entire season, and many other Denver sports as well. I am Ruto, and... Good to be back doing game reviews. Lunch time, come on, grab your friends. We're going to the playoffs again with Nate the Dog and Gabe the Big. The fun isn't over yet, it is at lunch time.